This is the Starlab Deep Dive. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Starlab Deep Dive, where we ask the right questions, go deep into the specifics, and interview experts about the hottest topics in science. I am Moritz, your host, and today I have the pleasure of welcoming a very special guest. I would like to welcome to the show Indrani Mukherjee, a PhD student at the University of Göttingen. <laughs> Indrani, thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here today. So to explain how this conversation came to be, I have to go back a couple of weeks to the 23rd of April, World Laboratory Day. To celebrate this special occasion, Starlab took it upon themselves to recognize and celebrate those who do research and experiments in these unique workspaces. And um, in order to do so, we asked people to send in their selfies because we thought it was time to shine a light on those doing some incredible work. Starlab then took those selfies and actually commissioned an artwork by the uh, Hamburg-based artist, uh, also called Moritz, Itarina, uh, with all of the selfies and created this huge, colorful, bright artwork um, that we then sent back to all of the brave scientists who sent in their photos uh, to say thank you um, and bring a little bit of color into their white and sterile labs. And Indrani, you were one of the people that sent in their selfie, right? So how does it feel to be part of an artwork commissioned to honor and thank scientists around the globe? So for me, uh, the first time I read the email from Starlab that uh, you guys are doing something like this, um, it really made me think that, oh my God, there's actually someone who's interested in, <laughs> in, in the boring lives of scientists because everyone just thinks that we are... Uh, working in, like you said, in white and sterile labs, and you know we don't have any any fun in our lives. Just wearing white la <laughs> lab coats, you know, holding pipettes and tubes every day, all day. And I really thought that um, it would be amazing to see how that turns out into into a portrait, so into a painting. Um, and yeah, I also wanted to see other people who, who were really interested in sending their selfies, like you said, brave people, uh, to, to, in the end, for, uh, everybody who actually would see the, um, painting would be like, you know, unknown to the, to the people mm -hmm. there, right? Uh, yeah. And I decided to send my selfie in, um, through your Instagram, uh, page and, mm -hmm. um, that's how it all started. Yeah, it turned out wonderful. So, and maybe for our listeners as well, who who can't see you right now, obviously, I should mention, as we're having this call, it's hanging right behind you, correct? Yes. Yeah. And would you say it has brought at least a little bit of color into your lab? Yes. So, um, the day I received the uh, the the poster, I was mm -hmm. super excited to open it, and actually, I was not in the lab when it came, and my my colleagues were like, "Oh my God, Indrani, it's here!" <laughs> uh, and the next day, I came, and the first thing we did was that we opened it. Um, actually, I have two of my other colleagues also in this painting, mm -hmm. and all three of us were like super happy to see it, and we just wanted to put it in our office right away. So that's mm -hmm. what I did, and now it brings so much color into this little white space that we have and everyone who now visit is, visits our office is like super happy to see it and they're like oh my god why didn't we know about this we would have sent in our <laughs> selfies as well so it's it's really nice to hear people say like that that's awesome and yeah it always brings a smile on my face when I look at it thinking hmm, what would be the what would these people uh, be doing at the moment <laughs> and what are their motivations and it's it's just motivating Every it motivates I, you to, to yeah, see like other people to. doing the same stuff as well, right? So to Yeah, have a, exactly. Yeah. Every time I need some motivation because, you know, every day is not happy here in the lab. <laughs> so I just need to stand two minutes in front of the poster. And yeah, there I have my motivation back. That's such a cool story. Thank you for sharing that. And I think one of the really cool things that Starlab did for World Laboratory Day as well was to donate one month of school um, to a girl in need through the Malala Fund for every selfie they received. Then they actually went and doubled that donation. Um, and I think this is amazing because education is one of the cornerstones, I guess, of, of making sure we inspire bright minds out there uh, to get into the exciting field of science. Uh, so that's one of my first real questions uh, I wanted to ask you today as well is when you look back, what inspired you to get into the field of science? So as a child, um, so I come from India and as a child, I actually wanted to be a doctor. So everyone, whenever I was asked this question, so Indrani, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would always instantly say doctor. Mm -hmm. 
because I just thought, oh my God, this is so amazing to um, help the world, cure some diseases, this and that. I mean, of course, I didn't know as a child that, you know, it's not that easy and stuff, but that was what, what was there um, in my mind. And that's why I uh, took up biology in high school. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so I think I was in, yeah, in high school when I went uh, to this uh, biochemistry um, open day sort of thing that we had okay. in, in our school and back home in India. And there it was the first time that I actually saw uh, biochemical experiments happening, mm-hmm. people working in the lab and um, doing small things, which we now know as molecular biologists know are quite the basis of research so basic mm-hmm. research and that really fascinated me um you know little things like isolating dna from fruits and things like that and then i came back home and i told my mom okay mom no doctor for me <laughs> i'm going to study here in this university biochemistry is something that i want to do now and that's mm-hmm. that's like final i want to do this this or nothing <laughs> that's really cool i like how it's like one moment especially that you can think back about that really inspired you to to change well i guess your your dream of a career path and um does it have anything to do with what you still do now like would you say you've continued down that path or have you had more Mm. moments that sort of made you switch completely no i have to say that i still am a biochemist so um i did my uh, bachelor's in biochemistry back home in india and then I came to Germany in 2015 to study a uh, master's in biochemistry and molecular biology from Bremen University. And then I came to Göttingen to do my uh, PhD also in biochemistry. So I think, yeah, for the past eight years, I've been studying biochemistry and working in this field itself. That's cool. Refreshing story to hear, especially since in the industry, there's a little bit of an image problem, like you said yourself, you know, a lot of people think of science as sort of working in silence, white lab coats, hours of doing microscopy and, and things that, or pipetting and, and things like that. Um, but that's not really the reality, is it? And it's a shame that it's sort of portrayed this way. So what would you say it's really like? What does the, the a day in the life of a cellular biochemist look like? Yeah, actually, you're quite right, because um, like I can tell you someone who's not a scientist or not not from the field of uh, like sciences for in particular, for example, my sister, Mm -hmm. uh, when she visited me in the lab, she was like, what do you do all day? Like, do you like you said, do you just pipe it and hold tubes (laughs) and mix one liquid with the other or, or what? And I told her that, um, yeah, when you look at it from outside, you might just think that, you know, we have no life at all. Mm-hmm. We don't do anything. We don't socialize. But it's not like that. I mean, mm-hmm. um, in my life, I would say every day is new. Every day is sort of an adventure, um, especially because uh, it's a challenge. So you don't know what experimental result you will get. Mm-hmm. Plus, what? so it's like... Uh, it's, it's like something that we do with our hands as well as with our mind, right? Mm-hmm. As a scientist, we have to think with our mind and, and then do it with our hands. So every day we think of new experiments. Sometimes it works, sometimes not so much. And when it doesn't work, we are like, okay, now what do we do to <laughs> really prove this? Yeah. Uh, and it happens more often than we would uh, expect it that things don't work out in the first go and then that, that's really challenging and it really inspires and it makes me curious to find better ways or other ways to uh, try and get answers to the questions that we have in our mind i mean in the end we all want to do something uh, for the for the society and give them back right wherever we are working and as scientists i think it's it's our it's our job to do it and um and it's not just being being alone in one room i mean we have so many discussions with our colleagues with the students who come to us and in the end they realize that okay it's not that bad it's actually quite fun and yeah i hope that uh, even the younger generation people in the school are like uh, you know given the chance to go and visit labs like i got when i was in high school and then they will really see that it's not just uh, white lab coats and uh, you know sterile pipe pit tips it's it's yeah. way more than that it's like you you can see the colorful world of cells and what's inside it and it, i think it's really fascinating isn't it 
I think so too. And I also really like how you summarized that, that it basically has to a do with exposure. So the fact that you were able to see, you know, in real life, what's happening in a lab made you, you know, think differently about uh, what you've been told, at least uh, what science was. And also, uh, I really like the, the idea of you saying that sort of I guess in a way, problem solving is, it, would you say that's your favorite part of the job that you have that's to look for new creative solutions? Absolutely. I think one thing that a scientist learns during his or her career or her, uh, the, the PhD especially is to solve problems because there is one problem every other day and you just cannot give up. You have to think and uh, get to a solution. And, and it's actually fun getting there in the end. It's really satisfying. Yeah. Would you say that? A lot of the time uh, when you're when you're sort of working in the lab, the, the reward is that, because I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's not just pipetting back and forth, but it's there's actually rewarding steps you're taking towards, you know, a greater goal. And maybe you can summarize for us as well, like, what are you working on right now? And how does, you know, those those little everyday tasks you might need to do, like you said, inspire you to really do something good for, yeah. for humanity at the end of the day? Yeah, like firstly, um, I would like to actually tell you guys about the story that um, it's, it's a personal experience that I had again when I was in high school, when I decided to take up research as, as a career path. Um, I remember one of uh, one uh, one of my friend's mother, she was also a scientist and um, we met and she told me that, you know, uh, it's really exciting and it's amazing that you want to be a scientist in the end of the at the end of the day. But remember that you know there are definitely going to be days when you would want to give up <laughs> <laughs> and just leave and just go out of the lab. But those are the days when you have to remind yourself that uh, there is a reason why you started and you signed up for this, right? So yeah. now, uh, when I, when I'm working in the lab, um, I, for example, I do a lot of microscopy and then I have, I don't know, hundreds of samples that I need to image. And sometimes, you know, these don't work, like the staining doesn't work or something doesn't work and I don't get the results. And then initially, of course, I'm a little sad that, okay, work, work worth of worth a week is like down the drain or whatever like you know uh, but in the end I, I learned something right because I uh, get to know what I might I have done wrong or what <laughs> must have gone wrong which I could always uh, keep in mind the next time I'm, I'm doing it and when the next time it works and it gives you results that you expected or sometimes not but at least something interesting that makes you even want to think more on what you can do better or mm -hmm. uh, you know to solve a problem solve a question um, it's very satisfying and rewarding. Like the days I get good results, I just have a very good sleep at night, actually. <laughs> I mean, I'm super happy. I'm telling it to my parents back home when I'm ca calling them to my friends and they're like, okay, wow, you had a really nice day today. So there are both bad days and good days, more good days. And then those are already, uh, you know, nullifying the bad, bad days that you have, that I have generally. Yeah, I can imagine. And so you as a cellular biochemist, right now you're studying mitochondria, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're what you're working on or Yeah, so um yeah, like you already know, I'm a cellular biochemist, so I work with the mitochondria uh, mitochondrial inner membrane structure and the proteins that are involved in uh, maintaining and stabilizing that structure like we all know from um our eight standard school biology books that you know the <laughs> mitochondria has these two membranes the inner membrane is a little bit special with these uh in invaginations and stuff like that and i actually uh, study the proteins that are responsible for making these invaginations because uh this or uh, these invaginations are important for a lot of cellular processes um signaling uh, processes metabolic processes and also the main thing that that the mitochondria does that we all know produce it uh, produce energy in the form of ATP mm -hmm. so it to do its job that the world knows that the mitochondria does be the powerhouse of the cell it needs to have proper morphology of the inner membrane and the proteins i study uh, basically look into that and what i am trying to do in my uh, phd project uh, is to 
kind of modify, manipulate those proteins uh, to manipulate the inner membrane structure and eventually then use that as some sort of target, maybe for drugs or whatever, uh, to cure several diseases, especially uh, neurodegenerative diseases, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, even um, wow. even um diabetes cancer um mm -hmm. also like some heart uh, so cardiac uh, diseases hypoxic conditions so these are things which are kind of triggered uh like with certain stimuli which are basically then mitochondrially targeted mm -hmm. and with with our work we are right now at a very basic level trying to study that mm -hmm. and hopefully uh we can find something which eventually in 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 the later future would uh <laughs> be really beneficial for uh, the society for for developing drugs and treating um, specific diseases actually mm. fingers crossed yeah <laughs> <laughs> no it's cool uh, i think well, that's one of the things i definitely remember from my high school biology class is that it's the powerhouse of the cell but it's cool to hear how much more it can do and i guess we're back at our earlier point of exposure do you think that it would help you know giving at least people in, in education, some sort of insight into the, the cool stuff you're doing, because it sounds so inspiring. You know, it's, it's like a really good story to tell and it's, it's real and it's, it could make people want to be a part of that as well. So do you think that maybe in the future sometime you could imagine, or maybe even through this podcast, people are inspired by, by what you're doing? Yeah. I, I really feel that this would be amazing if some if, if, universities or even schools you know kind of col uh, collaborate and make these kind of sh one day uh, open day uh, thing like things mm -hmm. for school students because yeah like you said as a, as a school student i had no idea that the <laughs> mitochondria does so many different things and so many yeah. different things are involved in maintaining just the structure of the membrane you know mm. I would never even be interested in working in the mitochondria if I had no, I, uh, you know, no, I had not seen that, okay, these things are probably possible. And I got to know this really late in my career, I, even actually after my master's, before mm -hmm. I joined the lab. Uh, and there are so many things that we work, uh, when, you know, here in the lab, like in reality with lipids and things like that. And I don't think anyone like school students, at least like school students have any mm -hmm. idea that you know, real research is going on <laughs> outside of the textbooks. Um, and it would be really nice uh, that if universities or labs or people who are higher in the hierarchy can actually organize things like this. And I, as a PhD student, would love to interact with uh, school students and tell them more about my research and try and make them curious enough to uh, take up this path in the future. Yeah, and maybe also incite the fire in them that, that you have as well to, to want to make a difference. I mean, it was very early uh, that you decided to be a doctor to help people, and now you've sort of chosen a different path, and you're, you're still on that sort of journey to try and create something or find something, discover something that can help people in a, in a certain way. I find that really beautiful, and I think that's something that doesn't always come from within. Sometimes you need a little trigger to show you, look, what's possible, you know? And I think that once people get that sort of exposure to, to these kind of topics and, and see that there is progress being made to, to sort of cure, maybe cure or even alleviate some of the symptoms of those diseases that you're mentioning, um, that it might incite some fire in, in, in young students and really to, to get on board and say, I want to be a part of that, you know? Absolutely, I believe so. I hope so, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, that it will it will definitely make more people curious, motivate them, and yeah, in the future, the future generations might all want to be scientists. Who knows? You know, <laughs> curing hope. something or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that uh, also the current situation with COVID nineteen and everything also shines more of a light upon the you know important work in general that science is doing. Um, and hopefully more people are interested in sort of getting aboard and, and seeing what they can they can do as well. Um, you mentioned to me the other day that when you were in the lab, you, you like to, to listen to some, some podcasts, for example. I thought that was really cool because, you know, you don't need to have personal contact with someone to get sort of inspired and, and get on board with, with some of these topics. Do you mind sharing maybe some of your like favorite science content for, for people out there so that they can maybe also give it a listen and, and see what they can do? Yeah. So, um, yeah, like, like you said, I really like, uh, listening to podcasts, um, when, especially when I'm in the sterile room, because, you know, I cannot talk to people over there. Uh, and it really also helps me concentrate, um, and do my work probably better. Um, my, so 
when it comes to science podcasts um i haven't really listened to a lot of different ones but the ones which i listen to and which i like uh so one of them is this um it's 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 an indian youtuber uh mm-hmm. his name is tanmay bhat and he basically explains the science or the neuroscience behind anything and everything Ooh, so behind okay. sleep behind love behind marijuana anything and everything and it's so nice because you as a scientist when you actually mm-hmm. hear what goes inside your body when we feel or you know consume these sort of things and how we feel react whatever it's like okay i know what's happening inside my brain you know yeah super and cool yeah when i talk to other people and tell them they're like oh we didn't know that you know there are so many different parts of the brain doing different things reacting to different emotions and different situations so that's one thing that, that's one that i really like uh, listening to i mean they're a bit long so you know sometimes i have to listen to them in parts but it's nice other than that um i also heard the podcast from from the sala deep dive recently mm-hmm. So they were also really nice the ones on sustainability that you guys have so yeah it really made me think about what i can do in the lab myself to um be more sustainable and reduce the yeah the plastic around me um other than that i also like to uh, listen to uh the the future talk in science by uh, by mark mm, so good, uh yeah. they have some really cool ideas and i think um if so th- So it's future talk right so it's basically all about what to do in the future and yeah. i think some of the podcasts like the one i heard about um 3d printing of tablets or pills mm-hmm. uh i thought it was pretty uh, interesting i mean imagine if one could could just print their own medicine at home or whatever it would save so much time and it could be also like really targeted to the person that's true. and and mm-hmm. and that just makes it the all the more interesting to actually go into that field and work i mean you know the these podcasts sometimes really uh, encourage me to yeah look into other uh, fields or other aspects of uh, life sciences as well because you can't just know everything mm. sitting in the lab right you sometimes yeah. have to venture out and uh, these kind of things help me at least personally to get to know what's happening around mm. in the world I like how you said that as well because that's um something that Starlab is sort of trying to to show people as well that science isn't necessarily just picking a field and running with it but it's sort of a mindset you know you can be fascinated with how things work and like you were saying you know neuroscience how your body works or even how it works uh, reducing uh, plastic sustainability in the lab and actually one of the articles we brought out recently um has to do with with specifically that and maybe we can just touch upon that because i think a lot of people out there especially young people obviously place a lot of um a lot of value in being more sustainable and uh, science is often seen as sort of a necessary evil that produces obviously a lot of plastic waste um but it's sort of unavoidable but there are things that that are being done and it is sort of going in the right direction so can you maybe touch upon what steps you've taken in the lab to reduce your your footprint Yeah so like you mentioned i mean as a scientist as a life scientist there is some amount of plastic or actually a lot of plastic uh, <laughs> that we produce and that yeah. is really bad <laughs> for the environment really right now with the whole climate change and with the global warming situation uh but there are definitely steps that we are trying to uh take uh, especially using the 3r so um mm-hmm. um so reduce What reuse we, and recycle right yeah Just, uh, exactly i mean this is something yeah so that nobody is confused yeah so what we like to do uh, in our labs is try to use um a lot of these glass pipettes instead of the plastic ones i know ster- uh, it has to be sterile uh, especially mm-hmm. when we're working with tissues and you know some uh, anything under the ster- uh, sterile bench but uh i mean glass pipettes can always be autoclaved right uh, you don't really have to produce use this uh, plastic pipettes uh, just because they are sterile and you can i mean they're anyway one time use and throw so the glass pipettes other than that i really like uh, the idea of uh, so the starlabs idea of the stacking uh, pipette tips so sterile pipette yep. tips because that way they are sterile but you do not have to open a new box every time mm. just have this uh strip sort of thing with all the new tips and uh then you just put it in the in the old box and 
maybe autoclave it and then it's ready mm-hmm. and sterile again right so i really like the idea because sometimes when i'm working in the tissue culture for example and a tip box is empty so in 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 our tissue, so in some labs where they don't have this technology yet i mean the tip box are, boxes are empty like the tips are empty and then i'm like what do i do with this box do i throw it mm-hmm. in the garbage i mean there is on one way you can use the box again to keep something but how many box can you boxes can you keep right in the end you end up throwing them in the garbage and that just like every week at the end of the week when i look at the plastic waste that is generated i'm like okay no we need to do something more so yeah we we and and it's not just me i think this topic is on everybody's mind and everybody's heart and everybody has actually started to do something about it because i mean we cannot you know leave it on the other person because in the end everyone if everyone thinks like that nothing will happen and we will just increase the plastic in the world and mm-hmm. yeah the uh, the quality of the air everything else will be reduced and i mean i don't know if we will survive after that yeah that's uh yeah but but i think that the, there are some things that we've already started doing in the lab um and taking care as much as possible not just plastic but also uh, energy energy consumption so we mm, uh, we one, try yeah. to yeah like I mean, we in the lab use so many heavy machines that um, consume a lot of energy, like centrifuges, mm-hmm. hoods, this and that. And and I really think that it's very important to peop uh, for people to be careful about this, to switch them off in the evening, air conditions. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I mean we in our labs have to have air conditions because of the machines but I think people should really make it a point to uh, switch it off when they are leaving in the evening lights everything like every small thing mm-hmm. counts right in the end water consumption as well water consumption yeah. yeah you just don't leave the taps open or you know the the ice machines a little bit open because if it's open it will be hot you know mm-hmm. they would more ice needs to be made these are the little little things which i feel that really everyone can do and together we can definitely bring up the sustainability and have a greener world i i love that thought and i think it's also really interesting that these thoughts are not something that doesn't apply to your private life as well right so if you care about sustainability if you care about um you know global warming and things like that all the approaches you take in your private life to reduce your footprint can also be applied at your job you just might need to find new creative ways or or things like that and that really gives me hope for the future because i think a lot of young people are more on board with these topics and really want to fight for a more sustainable future and i think if that they are privately you know really fighting for these topics that then also we can change jobs bit by bit in the future and maybe also look at new solutions um, that can be you know brought to labs and not just work in the in the home yeah so. absolutely i i definitely think so i mean oh, there's one thing that we also do in the labs is really uh separate the wastes mm-hmm. and not just throw any liquid in the sink you know there are yeah. there are uh, gmos there are like uh tissues and cells and or even toxic substances like super toxic for the environment not just for mm-hmm. us but also for the environment and we make it a point to uh separate these uh, also the plastic that we use to actually make like pipe these liquids or whatever everything is separated so that they can be uh, they can be disposed of um in a secure and environment friendly way cool so i have one last question for you and it's a bit of a big one it's kind of an open question but um We've been talking a lot about inspiring young bright minds to get into the field of science. If you could say one thing, you know, one inspiring thing about your job, one inspiring thing to uh, for young scientists to sort of get on board, what would it be? What would your message be to the to the world out there? Um the first, so if it has to be just two words, I would just say be curious. Mm. And curiosity will def- like it said curiosity is the mother of invention, right? Ooh, I like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So then everyone or every person who is thinking what to do should be curious to see what happens when they do that you know mm-hmm. things may work out things may not but that shouldn't stop you so in my opinion to be motivated you need to be curious and once you're curious you will want to do uh, the work you will want to research upon it and yeah 
you would want to move forward with it and once you start getting results there is no stopping then you will be like you would want to do more you want to because there is no end to science there is no end to a particular field so once you start it mm. it can go in any direction and you know it can go to any le- into any lens mm. so you just need to start you just need to be curious about one thing start doing it and then you will be motivated yourself i'm sure about that I like that. Not only fitting with the name of this podcast to dive deep into 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 science, but also what we've talked about today, right? So a lot of the things we talked about are sort of going out there and having a look for yourself, being curious. You were curious when you were at school, you looked at the stuff going on in the lab and you decided that was the the field you wanted to go into. And uh, also with the content you mentioned, uh, YouTube or um, also podcasts, you know, if you're curious about other fields in science, I think it's, like I said, it's a mindset that sort of allows you to be curious about the world but also then um find the rewards in being curious and in finding out more about things you didn't know. So Absolutely. I find that really beautiful. So Indrani, thank you so much um for taking the time uh today to have a chat with me. It's been super fascinating and uh to to get a little bit more insight into your field and also your story was was super interesting. And I hope that by chatting with with scientists like you and shining on um shining a light on how cool your job is as well as the interesting things you do we might be able to begin to shift some perceptions away from the you know boring image that science really has so thank you for being a part of this episode of the star lab deep dive thank you for having me here <laughs> thank you to all of our listeners out there as well i hope you enjoyed this episode also make sure to tune in for the next time where we be, uh, where we will be interviewing another interesting guest If this was your first time listening to a podcast from us, make sure to head over to your podcast player of choice, give us a follow or a rating, or even drop us a line at the Starlab International Instagram account or check out our latest article um, that we have just published on sustainability, for example. So let me know what you think and um, drop us a line. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time on the Starlab Deep Dive.